Thank you, Ravan. Okay. Sold on six ten. Okay. What's the name of that garage? Looks like this man is stuck in the truck. All right, getting started. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, this is the uh, Monday, July 11th, 2022 meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. My name is Jason uh, Molina. I am the, uh, the chairperson of the committee. Um, we will uh, get started with a roll call, and we'll start off with Rajesh. Here. Deborah, she is not in the room, uh, but maybe be joint is not joining tonight. Okay. Melanie. Here. Martha. Here. Gail. Here. Perna. Here. Jim. Here. And Kathy. Here. Okay, we also have uh, Rowan McAllister, Assistant Town Planner. All right, um, first I wanna uh, thank uh, Perna for being uh, assigned to the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, and we also thank Steve Boulay for his time served here last year. Uh, we are in our second year of the Community Preservation Committee, which is, uh, which is great to, to have this uh, uh, restart. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, and so our next order of business here is actually to reorganize since this, this is a new year. Um, the first thing we're going to be doing is taking nominations for the next chairperson, if there is another chairperson of interest. <laughs> um, I'd like to nominate Jason Molina. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Waste no time. <laughs> Did you have something more to say there? All in favor say aye. Well, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, I, I do want to entertain if any other uh, nominations on the table. Okay, not hearing any. Uh, all those in favor of uh, my nomination, <laughs> say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Okay, thank you. Approved. Okay, um, the next order of business, I'm sorry, the next uh, position is uh, vice chair. Um, is there a nomination for vice chair? I will nominate Deborah Mooney. Second. Second. Yep. All right. Any other nominations for vice chair? Okay, not hearing any. Um, all those in favor of uh, Deborah Mooney being the vice chair, all those say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Approved. All right, the next position. <laughs> Tre um, treasurer. Uh, I wish it was. Um, secretary. Uh, any nominations for secretary? I'd like to nominate Melanie McGee. Second. Second. All right, any other nominations for a secretary? Okay, not hearing any. All those in favor of Melanie's uh, appointment to uh, that position, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. All right, approved. Okay, back in business. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you for that. Thank you all. All right, um, next order of business is the uh, to review and approve the minutes from June 6, 2022. Are there any comments or questions relative to the minutes? Okay, not hearing any. Um, we'll take a motion to approve the minutes as posted. I so move. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes from June 6, 2022, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. None approved. Okay, next order of business is to review the CPA funding process and applications. And 
Ms. McAllister will be taking us through that. Sure. As I pull it up, do you want me to lead you through the entire document, or would you like to do that uh, as the chair? Uh, I think, well, let's bring it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's a uh, lot of uh, moving pieces here. Um, I think process and applications. Okay, um, so we basically have had the, pl the applications, the, which is the, which is the um, eligibility form and the full application itself, plus a Word document to accompany it, was sent over to, mem to town department heads, if I'm correct. Um, it was also sent to the Community Preservation Coalition uh, for their read as well. Um, the coalition feedback uh, came back today, and it was only one of the members, uh, the other members out um, on leave. Um, so we do have that benefit. And then uh, Rowan has the, uh, has the edits from town department as well. So from here, I think we'll, we'll just go through and, and just, um, does anybody need a walkthrough of it? I don't know if you had a chance to. Not, not so much that, but uh, just new to the committee, wha what is this community preservation coalition like? Remember oh, sure, sorry, I apologize for that. Just, just very brief again. Yes, uh, um, so the coalition, the coalition is a nonprofit uh, that the state works with directly to promote and help communities implement the Community Preservation Act. Okay. So um, they were very instrumental in as we were looking to have the campaign to have CPA adopted in, in Shrewsbury and other municipalities. Mm -hmm. um, and then they were also helpful to help us in implementing uh, the, our pro local program. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're like the trusted source that know everything about the, co about the CPA um, and uh, they've been around for I think as long as the CPA legislation's been around, so that's 20 plus years. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right, uh, does anybody need a walkthrough or have any specific questions about the edits that were posted? I will share, Jason. I, the committee has not seen uh, the coalition's comments yet because that came in. Too late. 3 <coughs> p.m. today. So yeah. maybe I can go through those. Just okay. Briefly. There are two comments, so it'll be very brief. Um, let me see if I can even find them. Um, otherwise, um, there are some questions on the side. We don't have to go through them tonight, but um, at, in my discussions with department heads, they just threw out some questions as well. So you can see on this side, they had a couple questions about what would be eligible. Mostly, I think, thinking about their departments and what, what they might be able to apply for. So. Um, I'll compile these into a list and um, try to get some answers to them, but this is also just for your information uh, as to what they were wondering. So this would be our first comment from the coalition, um, and this is on page four. Um, I just copy and pasted it right in. Essentially the text um, is recommending that we do not include kind of um, statements that say that we will prioritize projects that have two or more CPA focuses. And um, mm. that's simply because sounds like based on their experience um, that it's actually, it, it can get a little messy, um, that it, it's rare that, again, you can just read it here, it's rare that they all, that, that a project fits into multiple categories cleanly. Um, and I guess their recommendation was just that to keep it simple at least our first few years um, as we grapple with projects and just not call this out specifically, okay? So in mm -hmm. other words, take that statement out okay. of that, okay. Okay. Right, so you know, certainly um, you'll see this again down, down the line, I think also in the Community Preservation Plan okay. uh, calls that out. Uh, I think it's, it's, um, it's a it's a nice to have a you know blended project, uh, but it, implementing it would be more challenging because I'd say now you have two sets of criteria to be weighted against, um, and I think the, the guidance here would be is pick the one that's closest to it, um, and then we can work from there. So I mean certainly that doesn't preclude us from from reviewing the project to make sure it still fits and et cetera. So we not be, I don't think we're being hurt hurt by it. I think this is actually an advantage to make it easier for the applicant and for us in reviewing. I think the timeline also changes well. Yes, do you want to go chronologically? 
we certainly can. Oh no, we'll, you know, you're right. We'll we'll circle back to that. Yeah. 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 Either way. Um, I apologize. I don't. Ah, here it's, <laughs> it's the big text. Um, this is actually in the same vein. Um, the, this is the red lines are just kind of my edits to the comment, but the comment essentially was in in their experience, applicants will check as many boxes as they feel might might um, or their project might fall under and it gets a little bit muddy. So the coalition just suggested that instead of indicating an X for all the categories that apply, um, I've changed it to read indicate. Uh, X for the category that best fits um, this proposed project. I can even scroll. If you want to read this whole thing as well. Should we change that next sentence then, Rowan, to say you must choose one? Like he says, you must choose at least, least one. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should we just say you must choose one? Makes sense. Yep. Venable. I have a yep. couple quick questions um, or comments. On page 10 and page 13, um, I was wondering if, if just for ease of communicating for the applicant to communicate with us or uh, would it be, would it be um, advantageous to, to include in the top of that submission um, instructions to include our email address because it says Preservation Committee via email, but would it, does it make it easier for the applicant not to have to look it up and just to have it in that? That and as well, it's like and then it's or received by and where do you re where is it supposed to be received to? Like the to us to mm -hmm. the planning, you know what I'm saying? Just to clarify, I, I don't know if it's important, but when I read it, it was like okay, if I was applying, I would think, who do I email this to? It's just in those two places and then one other thing um actually sorry gail can we just uh, let's, let's take a pause on, on that first request right because i think me? i wanted to ask a question follow up to that um so rowan is there like a typical statement that is, is in other forums that the that the department has to deal with like what's the typical like do you say submit it to the planning department walk it into the planning department mm -hmm. see us at 100 maple app you know what i mean that yep. kind of thing yep i would give um, we have a planning at shrewsburyma.gov that we'll probably use um, to receive questions, and then I would probably just add the address if you'd like to, you know, come in and, and speak to us. Okay. Okay. Is Does that, that sound yeah. sound reasonable? Uh, and the other thing so, was sorry, that sorry, sorry, so have everyone okay with that? Well, just just one question on the email. Mm -hmm. So who has access to that? So. And, and th this maybe brings up a larger point of how we are going to process applications. Um, and I guess I'll answer your question first is, um, it would be myself, the other assistant town planner, uh, our director, Bernie, and our um, admin, Emily. So it would, be, it's, it's, it would be an internal email, but I think that is how at this point we want general questions to come in to come through staff and then I would filter them out to the board during the public meetings under correspondence because again we wouldn't want you making decisions or answering um, substantive, substantive things yep. without meeting right Good okay quick question. go ahead um, again planning email kind of seems to be too broad and they may get so many things it's not a, diff, a it's, it's a pretty easy uh, item for town to create like cpc yeah. at uh, shrewsburyma.gov i think uh, it would be better to have a separate email coming in for, for uh, with respect to the project relating to cpc i think and it's uh, Ch check with either Kristen or somebody uh, yeah, they might no. get in. Yeah. I, no, and that's an excellent point. I think I, I'll share. I, I know that the town um, recently hired um, a staff to try to standardize many of the applications and, and uh, different processes in town across departments, and I'm going to be working with her as to what kind of online uh, systems we can use to submit the these um CPC projects. 
I would say I, I am in agreement. I want to see how it shakes out, though, as to what um, kind of online platform we use. Because I don't believe at this point they'll just be emailing their applications to planning. I think I'd like to see, and I'll fill you in as we go. I know we don't have too much time left, but um, what, what the application portal, if any, will look like. Right. I mean, I think where you're, you know, as you just said, that the planning department is handling these these email requests right now, or anything that comes in, um, mm -hmm. that if you're seeing that this is getting too muddled between CPA, yeah. CPC stuff, and, and everything else, then I think that's your yeah. all to say to separate or not. Until then, it's in your, you know, you're, you're seeing it, you, you, you'll handle it as best approach it. So I think, I think it's a good call out, yeah. um, but I think I'll leave it up to Rowan to uh, determine if that's necessary at this time. All right, so this, so this will have the address and the email for planning, and are we good? Would that change? Okay. I think that's the same thing will happen on the application side as well, since uh -huh. it's on both, as you called out. Gail, I have another uh, comment. On the introduction page on the second paragraph, uh, it says it is recommended that interested parties attend an information session and contact the Community Preservation Committee to discuss alignment of proposed, and how would, how do they do that? The same same method through that. Would you just give? I'm me just page? anticipating somebody would read that and say, well, well, how the heck do I contact this? What, what page number is that, Gail? Pardon me, page, page number, number two. two. The introduction. Okay. And that's kind of along the lines of the same feedback. The second paragraph. The information session, I believe, is the workshop. Is that my is that, that is, the correct understanding? Yes. From the working group. Right. So perhaps we should update that language. Agreed. And then, are you all set on that one? <laughs> uh, I tried to read it like I was. Ignorant of everything, which is not too far from the truth. <laughs> no, <but> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, all set on that. Well, yeah, and Gail, just I, I kind of gave Rowan the kind of the, the very same similar feedback that you did about this paragraph as well, in that you know it says to do something, but it doesn't tell them how, how to, to do, do it, it Ex right? exactly. And whether it's a link to how to do it or whether it's a how to do process, like. Mm -hmm. I had, and it's throughout the doc. There's a lot of references to go here to go do something, but it doesn't spell out where that is and right. how to do it. That's all. I think if the easier we make it for people, the, the less stress will, it will be for them. Um, on page eight, um, step five, it says project funding application review and applicant project president. The CPA representative, um, is that... I would could you clarify who that person is or how that I'm not sure it just says the CPA representative will review project applications so should it be plural or is there one person that's going to be reviewing the applications or is it the planning department uh, the intention with the representative was to try to keep it uh, intentionally vague um, as we okay. as we identify whether it's going to okay. be that's only fine. Rowan or so, you know, it's so who's seeing it first and then it comes, I mean, ultimately all applicants will come, applications will, will be seen by us. Correct. It'll be in the drive, but who's going to be doing the reach out? Is it, is it myself or, you know, is it Deborah? Is it, is it Rowan? All right. So that, that was the still to, to be determined. Is that, um, uh, Maybe it shouldn't be a big R, but it should be a small R. Right? So it's not a title, right? But a rather, rather. Yeah, probably small R. Yeah. Sorry, and, I, and I, it's a great call out, and I didn't catch that. Would it make sense? And I, I'm just asking, I'm not, but rather than just say a CPC representative will, would just make sense to say projects will be reviewed? Like that, you don't, that way you don't have to call out in that statement that it's CPC, because if it ends up being Rowan or Bernie or somebody else, you don't have to necessarily make it a statement that CPC will review. Like it could just say it will be reviewed type of thing. I, I'm just throwing it out there as a language thing. Mm. All, all project applications will be reviewed for completeness and maybe, you know, you can just, 
And addition, yeah, additional Take out the word CPC and just use the word all, <laughs> you know. We could, I could yeah. rework that paragraph. Just, is this, do you know if this is the only time that's mentioned or should I do a uh, CPC representative, I think, is throughout. Times. I yeah. It yeah. was another one someplace. All right, I'll, I'll flag it and then I can rework some of it if we want to get rid of that, that term specifically. Yeah, because it, it actually is going to be in, because, you know, as we, further elaborate saying the first one is the very high high level, then it's the second level and the third level review. So yes, CBC representatives is there from a couple times. Okay. But does anybody have any concern with let's say the, the applications being funneled through yeah. planning? Yeah. 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 Okay. For first review and then right, because obviously there every day, right? So I'm supposed to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> waiting for one of us to you know to review it and say, oh okay, I got a question about that, right? Okay. Now, there are other comments throughout this document. Is the intention to walk through some of the questions that were raised uh, at this time? Well, I think we'll, we'll continue. I think we'll continue on. If Gail, Gail, do you have anything else? Pardon me. Do you have anything else you want to? I had one more, actually two more, but I can't, I'm trying to find it. Um, on page seven. Um, on the under step one, the note regarding uh, maintenance and project funding, um, I think that's really important that people recognize the fact that ongoing maintenance and stuff is you know has to be considered. Maybe either bolding that paragraph or in a different font or something so it, it stands out might make it this section important. Yeah, that yeah. section. So people understand that 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 it's a responsibility of the applicant and other relevant project entities to initiate or I mean it just reinforces what you've said other places. So maybe even just bolding that second sentence. Yeah, just the second sentence might be enough. And then I'm trying to find. Sorry, Gail. Gail, your 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 comments, your ver verbal comments, are relative to maintenance, which doesn't jive with that line. So did you mean to have? I I agree with that bolding, but did you mean something else to be also called out here relative to maintenance? No. Okay. I don't think so. I think that's. I didn't find anything. That somebody else found okay. something. And maybe you can refresh my memory as to where the box is where you're supposed to check. Oh, here it is on page 11. The historic preservation projects only. It asks if, um, if the Shrewsbury Historical Commission made a determination that the property or artifact is of significant historic value, yes or no. And I was curious if, if we would want to have, and it says if no, um, then they check the box. Do we want um, them to have to include some written verification of that or that of the determination by the historical commission in the application process? You know what I'm saying? If they have to, if they have to come before the historical commission and get a determination, maybe there should be some written document from the commission that states that so they're not just saying making it up I mean I know they have to come back and we would go through it but maybe it would be a box to check make it one less step later on would the uh, uh, more historical commission um, write a letter or something like that well or? if they if they have to come before the commission for determination then we could r write a statement to the fact that yes or no and then give it to them. Is that part of the normal process for the historical commission? Is that not necessary? I'm just, I'm just wondering if it's a. My question would be: Is that is that something that's normal for the historical commission to do? If somebody that, that would well, that would be our role in this in this. Uh, from what I understand, we would have to review to see if there's historical significance. So if if that's the case, if there was historical significance. It puts it in a different category. So, and if there isn't, then that would give them a clearance that, that we don't have to worry about historical stuff. Yeah, what I was just, I, would, I didn't want to give anybody extra work to do. So, uh, exactly. outside of CPC or CPA, okay, does the historical but commission actually give guidance and or like written 
hey, thank you for coming in front of us today. We have done this review of your, whatever you brought to us, and here's our determination. Is that part of their normal process flow outside of this? QHEL hasn't been because nobody comes to us. <laughs> if we would like it to be. <laughs> All right. All right. So, yeah, so, um, so to, answer the, yeah, to answer the question about that checkbox, um, I think at this time, uh, I'd like Just to leave keep it, it as is. Keep okay, it as is that's because fine. once you see that, once it, it, this is flagged, if, if this is a historical, if you, someone says this is a historical project, <laughs> I'm sure you're going to be on it <laughs> to look at it and say, right. what are you talking about? Yes, but right? what if they say <laughs> no and it really, and, and it is? If, well, in either, in either case, I mean, I think there is a due diligence that has to be done here. Whether someone <laughs> says yes or no, um, whether someone checks the box for affordable housing, and it's like, it, no, it's not affordable housing. Okay. You know, it's All right, that's fine. I'm uh, just bringing it I, up as a... No, no, I, I appreciate it. But I think the call out here is that um, the, the historical commission, uh, if it hasn't already initiated um, a procedure on how to review those kind of requests, it's best to get that going sooner than later with the new right. members that have joined, right? Bring, bring, bring everything to us, whatever you are. It's like, <laughs> happy to review. I said, I have a document for you to read. <laughs> Best <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you for your indulgence. Those were my... May, may I just make one, one comment? The way that I see somebody potentially answering this question is thinking that, uh, well, either they brought it to the Historical Commission and the Commission has weighed in on it and said yes or no, or they simply haven't brought it to you, and somebody could honestly check no, and that would be the case. Right. But in any case, you would see the application and be aware of it and could take further steps if needed. Correct. Okay. Yep. All right. And just a reminder, the CPC, this is just eligibility, right? You could always come back to the applicant and say, we actually need this from you or we need more information from you. <coughs> Yeah. We're determining. I mean, we're not bound strictly by yeah. the timeline. Okay. Um, but we do have a short timeline to turn around from exactly. eligibility. That's why I was trying to shorten it by not having them have to come back. You know, it's like if it's if they have it all the first round, then it's not like you have to go back and say, Hey, you got a, you need a determination. Well, um, there's also an opportunity the community can use, which is the, the workshop. And that's intended to just talk through what what do you have in mind yeah. to do? Um, and again, this is our first, you're right. coming into the first year of actually getting ready to hear applications and, and to process them, right? Um, so last year was a lot of planning documents, right, to get ready for this, for this moment. So now really has, rubber hits the road, but we have to live a little too uh, to see how this flushes out. So, at the, so basically at the end of this, this calendar year, this uh, fiscal year, we will be taking any, any feedback we see that to make the process better, right? And then just loop, loop that in. Um, so unless there's like something really egregiously out there that, you know, you, we've got to change that now, I think, you know, I think we have to settle on something because otherwise we have our, we're in the July meeting, right? Right. We have only one month left, right? Yeah. August, and then really want people to have it mm -hmm. August, right? Right, and, yeah. Right, the eligibility form, right? So. Um, <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, may I just ask, uh, um, how often does the uh, Historical Commission meet? Once a month, but not in June or July or, or July and August, <coughs> we don't meet. No. Unless it was a special... Special need? Especially, okay. we, could, we could call, they could, the chair could call a meeting, a special meeting. Okay. But generally, we're not scheduled in July and August. Okay. Which that could change. I mean, I have, that, you know, maybe we're going to have to if, if this stuff gets rolling. Um, it, it looks like it might. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Maybe you could take off, you know, another month somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to take off any month. I mean, you know, it's. it's mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you'll be excited to have a meeting to, to review someone's application. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, there'll be TV cameras, everything. It'll be, it'll be very cool. All of us. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other uh, committee member comments? Okay. So now, it's department comments. Sure. All right. All right. Some of these comments are, I think, just suggestions or merely comments, but um, we can, I think we can go through some quicker than others. So um, just to go briefly through, we just had a couple questions about whether 
if it's standard to have a two-step process, again, our answer, my answer was that, uh, you know, it hopefully saves the applicant time, establishes whether they're eligible or not, and also the, I believe the coalition suggested we do this to, to just simplify things for us as we get started. Um, again, just a formatting comment, should this be combined? Again, I believe it was intended as a summary just to, again, call out the two-phase process. So I'm, I'm proposing we just leave it. Um, and again, just stop me or Jason if you'd like to make any comments. I'm sorry, can we just um, do a check to make sure that uh, Rajesh can still hear us and we can oh. recognize if he has a question? Um, I can hear and I'm following it, but I do not have any questions or comments yet. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank, thanks for checking in. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. So as I mentioned, they had a couple questions about eligibility as they, I think, consider their own um, projects. So um, the health department asked if these grants could apply to individuals um, with some kind of public health emergency. Um, I guess at this point, I wasn't comfortable answering. We can reach out to the coalition on some of these, but my immediate inclination is that no, it cannot go to individuals. Um, However, the only yeah the only category w that I, I'm aware of that can be like of a personal assistance is would be on the community housing side, mm -hmm. and that's going to be on the support category relative to let's say rental assistance, um, um, emergency rental assistance mm -hmm. I should say yeah or mm -hmm. emergency uh, mortgage assistance as well so that and it's if that line item was funded so we would have to have that in place <coughs> but it is that's the feasible piece right. Um, I also got a question from our DPW director as to just what the difference and what the line may be between rehabbing um, recreational land and um, kind of supplanting what, what they would normally be doing, mm -hmm. so kind of a, a re-striping of some of their courts was something that was thrown around, and I believe that is, at the, that point I said it was not applicable for funding. Um, but again, if you want to do some of those projects, they may be able to be part of a larger um, comprehensive project. Right. So if it's a refurbishment, right, that. if it's, right, if it's uh, redoing the whole court, well, yeah, to, you have, you right. have to paint the court, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> or the fencing around it. Um, <clears throat> but if you already had a plan to, um, you know, uh, redo the hoops, right, that's, that's maintenance, right? That, um, yep. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. And lastly, it was just what kind of oversight from the state um, uh, kind of um, observes what projects get funded and whether they actually were eligible. So we know that from Stewart um, that there is there isn't a um, a group that's looking at these projects to say was it truly eligible. Um, so there's no police person at that at that level. Um, however. Um, we do want to make sure we have a due diligence in town because that does open up the door for any legal litig you know, litigation if someone were to challenge why CPA monies were used for something that was you know, blatantly not you know, within the spirit of CPA law. And that's why the CPC is important to review those applications to make sure that we're, we agree with that. Also, the plug there is this. Um, when someone goes to the coalition's website, they'll see a whole listing of projects that other communities <clears throat> have done for the last 20 plus years. Not every project in that database, in my personal opinion, would have been covered under the CPA. So if I heard, if I heard that project, I'd be like, no, I don't, I don't think that would apply. Um, but again, it really is about the community and they're doing their own due diligence to make sure that they are in the clear in terms of saying yes to move forward with the CPA application to town meeting for their approval. Yeah. Once, once a town's um, voters approve it, whether they have town meeting or whatever their arrangement is, you can hardly argue with it. I, you know, I mean, I have, I've seen some things I thought were a little dubious and were really stretching a point. But if the town meeting approved it, you know, we have no, we have no say to <laughs> complain about it. We can only, you know, watch our own patch. So. Right, right. I mean, there are multiple layers uh, yeah. through this process. So I, th I think to answer that, that question. Great. Was that, yeah. All right, just a quick comment um, here at the top about saying a project completed within a reasonable time frame seems reasonab reasonable. I think um, 
it was just a, a comment about the word feasible not being uh, specific enough. And also a second question about if we wanted to put a time frame on uh, the proposals, as in a completed by a certain time. I think every proposal is going to be different, and they should have a timeline, and they should be expected to adhere to that timeline unless there are circumstances that arise, and in that case, they should be in communication with the CPC, and it's a conversation. It's particularly a problem if you let something go out uh, a few years and the costs of everything have changed, which is not unlikely. Um, so, uh, you know, you can't let it go five years or something that would be, you know, would, that's, that, I don't think that's reasonable. Um, but we'll just have to see how that goes. I, th I think our judgment. Uh, so this is a question really more around the application being in, in on time or the, app or the project being done in a certain <coughs> time? This, the second, yeah. The second, okay. I think it's too varied to actually put in a document like this. I think the, each in one is going to be have to wait on its merit. Okay. I, right, I think that'll be a factor as we deliberate on the project proposal. Mm -hmm. All right, this was just our coalition comment. Um, there was a simple question about what other towns have done. I think we've fallen f fairly within other towns' timelines in terms of when the eligibility is due, when the application is due, and when town meeting votes. Um, however, um, and I adjusted this in the CP plan, but not here. So as one of the coalition comments um, on the plan, was to suggest that our application, our full applications be due in mid-November instead of December, as this document says. Um, and so that's a fairly substantive, substantive change. And um, I, I can redline it here, but um, as when we discuss the timeline later in the agenda, we can get into more detail, but I would propose adjusting it here as well. From December to mid-November? Mm -hmm. And again, we can, I'll put it in as a red line, but um, perhaps we can discuss more at the time when we review the entire timeline. Yes, makes sense. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just a comment that funds will be available July 1st um, and that we are referring to post-approval documentation, which uh, I, I don't know what that refers to, or they didn't know what that refers to. Right, and that's, yeah, that's an open item that um, the working group has open. <laughs> um, <clears throat> frankly, we haven't been able to, to focus on that uh, yet because, you know, actually the ap application pride is really the, the piece of it to get through. Um, so what does a post-application look like? Um, that would be, post-approval would be like, uh, what's the, the reporting mechanism? Like, how often do they report on the progress of the project? Mm -hmm. How do they submit a, um, how do they request uh, Money, <laughs> or how does that pro how does that process uh, work? Um, how do you close out the project? You know, what what are the sign offs to say yes, this is complete? So those are the kind of general things that, that would be included in the in the post approval documentation. How do you get the money? How to close? How do, how do you report the pro status of your project? And how do you report that the project is complete? So should we, um, oh. is it, would you you, like it would be best to take that out? But it's, it is an item, it is a- <coughs> Something <coughs> to think about. Okay. Right. Okay, let's see, small changes in wording, recommended. I'm assuming you all took a look at this. If you had any problems, we can, we can stop, but. Again, just clarifying some ling <coughs> excuse me, some language. Free to stop me. This was our comment from earlier. All right. Um, to our earlier discussion, uh, Kristen Lass asked what format we wanted to take these submissions in, as I, and as I said, we'll be working on that. Um, 
in the next month or two. Um, Dan Rowley, our uh, sewer superintendent, uh, worked, I believe, in a community that had CPC, uh, or had CPC, and he went in front of the committee a few times and went on site visits. He suggested, he felt that that as an applicant was very helpful um, and wanted to just raise the issue. We don't have to address it right now because if that's not of the board or the committee's interest, but just a thought at this time. So is he saying that we should have site visits by committee members or? Yeah. Well, I'd be delighted to do that. <laughs> organized site visits with community or committee representatives mm -hmm. to the locations. Field trips. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Who's driving the bus? <laughs> so it's pre-post, pre-during? Probably, pre I would imagine that was after the application comes in, during the time of review. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to even go in these documents if we want to leave it open-ended. You know, for the first few years, we're probably going to be all out there driving by slowly and just looking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, think should, I don't think you need to have it in the doc. I don't think it's a bad policy to have as part of the committee, but I don't think it's something that needs to be in the application document. I agree. There may be some that we don't need to. Right. Because right. Yeah. The, because of the size or scope right. or whatever. Yeah. Else. Correct. Yep. Okay. But it's a good call up. Yeah. 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 Mr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a com comment. From the planning board side, whenever we have to do some site visits, there is this um, uh, board quorum, so they strongly who advised us not to go, like, if, if it's a five-member board, three people can okay. be there. So that's something, again, again if, if, if there's going to be a quorum, it has to be a public meeting, noticed, and all that. So just explore that aspect of it, and um, if only certain number of people have to go, that's fine. Again, at this stage, probably it's too early to think of that, but. That, that's the legal side of it, you know. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So technically, four people can go from this committee to anything without being... Yeah. Yeah, okay. I would say further explore that, you know. Uh, again, I, I don't want to be on the safer side with this four or five or two, but... Uh, our, our yeah, our quorum is five. Oh. It's, a, it's in our bylaw, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah, and the other five are, yeah. are, are good. Okay. Um, but I would be delighted if we have... Uh, a project where we need to go to a site visit, you know, that, that would be a good thing to have, you know. Yes. <laughs> and what a wonderful opportunity for the public to see. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. We'll be there with our cameras and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Selfies. All right. So this um, section under property information, one of the questions was just, do we want to have a, um, like, tax status check um, if the owners are in good standing with the town? Oh. Um, in the application itself, I think that could be part of the background due diligence that staff or uh, staff would do, um, and not necessarily in this. But if you'd like, if we have any concerns, it could be added. Can, can you please repeat that? I didn't get it. Uh. Um, it, some kind of the suggestion was: Do we want any kind of statement um, saying that the property owner is in good standing with the town, mm. good tax standing? Uh, in terms of like paying taxes on property, mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. Yes. No liens. No liens. Okay. I don't. I don't want to go there. I, if you can take care of that behind the scenes, or somebody can, or you know, if there's any question, <clears throat> but I really wouldn't want to go there in this document. It just seems a little intrusive. And I think it also like where does it end? Like, how, what do you check and what do you not check? What is in the scope and what's out of the scope? Mm. Okay. It can get a little dicey. Like, how far do you go? Like, why do you stop there? Why didn't you check that? Like, yes. Does anybody have any outstanding warrants? Yeah, or quarry <laughs> checks, or, you know, like, yeah, I, I think it's library. a slippery okay. slope. Exactly. Mm. Like, how big is big, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't That's want to fine. touch that. <laughs> a tax, tax lien can be an easy one, right? Like, it's something that comes from town as part of the application, at least at the second level of the application. We it, can ask them I believe it's, I've never checked a property but i believe that's something i i can work with our other de departments for again i mean i am looking at it from a from a public point of view suppose we don't look at 
hacks lean situation just as an example and we approve that and it goes out into the public boy these guys didn't even check their own taxes they didn't even pay taxes and they approved the project you know so for, from the public perception no, point I, of I view agree with you yeah um, again i mean when there are property transfers uh, that that's a common thing that they require and it's a relatively very easy thing to get especially i mean if they don't owe taxes it's very simple to get tax lien certificate from the town i i, I believe you know again correct me if i'm wrong but um, uh, it could we could add it as an internal check in internal internal yeah. check yeah, yeah, excellent yeah. idea Just not okay, have yes. it called out the other thing there's always uh, the, re the reality is that um uh CPA monies are going to be uh, mostly on town pro owned property. Mm -hmm. so this, the hardest question really is is about are, are you applying with the town, right? Because you really need to tease that out, saying okay, who who did I talk with? Because um, otherwise it's private property, and there's going to be a lot more scrutiny if it's private property, right? It, needs, it still needs to be in the the, the community's public interest. Yeah, so put my, private you know public money into private hands, but still accessible to the public. Right. So I think there'll be a lot of scrutiny on that. Yeah. But it's still a good check yeah. right, to yeah. have there um, right. in the yeah. background of what we'd look at. Yes. What, what recourse would we have if there was a project, somebody came with a project, it was okay, they went through it, but then for some reason <laughs> the money wasn't used as it was intended to be used. What, what safeguards do we have if that was to happen? Does a town have to go after that person or I mean what I mean I think that's a I'd hate for, the for that coalition. to happen but it could you know somebody could say hey I've got a hundred thousand yeah. dollars here and I the project doesn't isn't gonna go and I, the money's gone I mean I, I think it helps with the types of applicants right limiting it or, or pref <coughs> having preference over nonprofits town departments etc right but Certainly, a question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah. I guess you know, without invading their privacy, it, it's nice to know if they have a criminal record or you know they've. My my understanding is like again, if if some the proponent, when they complete a project that they have to somehow certify in some fashion to the CPC or the body that approves the funding, that it is done in accordance with the the application approval and the CPC regulations, and only after that, the uh, portions of the money will be released, but uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Th th that's how normally these things work. Uh, like, for example, once again, planning board, I take, the, I, give, I give the example, like they, they put in a uh, review fee, and um, after the review is done, they submit the uh, invoices, saying that it's been done in accordance with these and then the money is uh, returned you know so when right. they when we pay these monies to them or when we give the funds out i am assuming like right after the town vote we are not going to give in bulk to to the applicant it comes in phases as they complete the project certain invoices will come Sometimes. i don't know who will be the approving authority but that's normally what happens in the projects Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm saying too much here. No, 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 no. no that sounds. Is, yeah, yeah, no. This yeah. is and this is where in that post post approval yeah. process mm. that we we still have to write down. Yeah. Um, but it's it's not like this is um, like it hasn't been done before, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm saying uh, like there's we 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 can certainly leverage existing mm. processes like as you were describing, mm. right? Um, mm. Which which I've seen as well, right? Being yeah. that that would be the case, you know, you have. Um, you have to go through some milestones that have been agreed upon in terms of how this will be paid out, right? Uh, as far as this, this project, there's a question on the application side about the milestones. Mm -hmm. What are the project milestones? And, and I, you know, we, we see that the monies are going to be tied to those milestones, right? Mm -hmm. So certainly if you're not hitting your milestones, you've got a problem with this project, right? Um, but I think this starts going into the area of like legal counsel, what does town, you know, Town manager's office normally do with non-compliant applicants of any course. You, you got public money, you're not living up to your obligation. What are the what are the typical recourses? We're just a funding source, right? So once the monies have been approved, it's still a, a matter of town dealing, right? To say how do I make sure that this is being followed on? Whether it was a, a contractor putting you know new roadway in or <clears throat> building 
new playground. Mm -hmm. Um, along the same lines as tax lien, if it is on private property, we'd need to do some sort of title search or at least confirm that whoever's presenting it yeah. really does own the property. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be yeah. an internal, not mm -hmm. necessarily a box, but mm -hmm. another one of those double checks. <laughs> Realtor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We just made these changes um, to make it specific to Shrewsbury. And then this question of, do we want a character limit on these boxes? And that applies to both this eligibility document and the full application. Uh, and if so, what? No. Many of the, the grant applications that I work with have character limits of 1,500. Um, Sometimes it's 3,000, which is very generous, but those are for individual questions. So for what you have on the screen, Rowan, please give a brief description of your project. You know, that might be 100 words. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would, that would be reasonable. 100 words, 500 characters, 1,000 characters, something like that. Maybe I can mock up a f uh, word limits f for the, the various answers, and um, we can review it. You want, you, you want the applications to be easy to read and process, yeah. and yet you want people to be able to, to talk <clears throat> about their project. And oftentimes, I mean, they, they could also perhaps include attachments, which include photos or additional information that they want to share. Do you, do you think it would be wise to add that at limits now at this stage? I think we see what we get and then you, you know, Just, after, after reading them yeah. this year, then see, oh my, you know, we're getting um, epistles from people. We need to scroll it back or maybe we're not getting enough from people. I think it's too soon to tell. Right. And, and then uh, along with and those, those attachments can spawn and should spawn lots of information. If we're talking about a sign, right, or trail sign <laughs> yeah some simple trail sign <laughs> Versus, shouldn't be a big deal uh, affordable housing building yeah. right, I, right. There, there there's different requirements for different projects <laughs> right yeah. it's gonna, yeah. it's right. gonna differ but I, I think you still is is there a a place where people can submit a short paragraph that can go out to the newspapers for example mm. um, about their their project without getting into the floor plans mm -hmm. Is, is this is this an online? I know you talked about portals being developed. Mm -hmm. are, you, are we talking about this being an online mm -hmm. yeah. application uh, process? Well, I was just going to yeah. say, if it is, there's yeah. probably a character limit. I was just going to say, by default, you're going to uh, get one anyway, right? You're I gonna... don't know enough about what might be coming to answer right. that. Yeah, and probably not in time for this this cycle, yeah. this year. Yeah. At this stage. Uh, I'm more in favor of not having a limit. Once again, we need to see what uh, is there. I'm more of a detailed person, and especially for these projects, I want to give as much information as possible to make my project eligible for funding. So uh, I think not having the limit at this stage, at least for a year or two, to figure out how it goes, might be better because um, I'm always nervous like if there's a limit if I shortcut it am I not including something that would help my project get through when I say my project I'm not the proponent but I, I'm, I'm looking at it from outside you know um, I mean w w why do we need to again and I understand your point that you need to be concise and all that but why do we want uh, this day again? People who want to be concise may be concise anyways. Um, that, that that's my personal uh, bias or opinion. You know. Um, may I suggest we have two boxes: one for the shorter version, and then one for you know. Please explain your description or provide more detail. You're in the application side. Or exact uh, the. Uh, I'm in the eligibility. Eligibility, okay. And so we're asking for a brief description, and let's see. Yeah, so for eligibility, I don't think we need 
the whole big detail picture. We just are trying to determine does this project meet the parameters of this funding source. So they ought to be able to do that in 100 words. Yeah. It also, I mean, in the most um, basic way the application format might be is a fillable PDF. And in that case, and it, they would just have what space-wise uh, if the eligibility comes in that way. So in that case, I would suggest a character limit um, so that people aren't surprised when they run out of space. Surprised and frustrated. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's in the true. middle of a sentence. Yeah. Could you, could you do something that says, you know, if your description of your project exceeds mm -hmm. X, please attach a Y doc? I mean, I just, I did, just to kind of, again, and I don't know what we're going to be allowed to utilize or not. You know. I know. I, I understand how maybe we should, yeah, get moving on the application format, which would inform the word. So maybe, maybe we put this on hold and I come back next month with a proposal for how we are submitting it. Would that be helpful? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be yeah. helpful. Yeah, that'd be helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, and, and I think I my cut tells me that it's going to be a, a fillable Adobe PDF, right? Because that's how we that's how our other applications are at this yeah. point. A lot of the information is covered in the other sections as well. So if it's a brief description of the project, but part of that description is could be what the community needs are and all these other categories. So maybe we're getting all the information we need. It's just been broken up into, mm -hmm. into the boxes, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll be backing into it. They don't have to write it all twice. <laughs> to it. Okay, and I think we do, I think we have a statement here about attach anything else if you need more. Yeah, would you like that now? It, it was like a broad, I think it was an instruction set. Oh, um, you are you saying you are? We already have something. I believe we already I, have that. Yeah, that, that was one. up here. Yeah. Oh, up to two additional pages. There you go. There you go. All right. All right. So that, that, great the that, attachments. There you go. Wild card attachments. So perhaps I'll just get rid of. I'll, I'll still try to figure out what format we'll use. But yeah. all right. <laughs> I think in terms of the format for it, submitting the the path of least resistance, given given this this year, yeah. right? Sounds good. All right. Um, I'll just take a second. Um, along with the eligibility form, we also have this co-sponsor consent form, um, which I'm sure you're reading through. You hopefully understood what the intention behind it was. But um, we, in speaking with uh, department heads, they were in support of this um, and um, appreciated that it would come at this eligibility stage. Uh, simply because if someone is really excited about an idea, but it, it just on public land specifically, but it's not feasible for the town to help construct or maintain whatever, we don't want them to put too much work in without it, right? Without permission. So that's the only comment I believe on this. The only thing though is, well, it's, I think it's important to have this, this document to sign off that they Part, you have to do a mutual partner in, in moving forward with this. I, I'm hoping that this is not a way to, to squelch any requests, like saying, oh, you're asking for what? Ooh, I don't think I have the manpower, a person power to do that. Um, meanwhile, the monies are here, right? Mm -hmm. The monies are here to do that if it's a worth, worthwhile project and perhaps maybe the labor can be external, right? Third party labor. So. Um, I think we have to just be watch out this plays out if we're hearing from applicants like I was shot down no yeah. <laughs> meanwhile you said you have this money right and I'm teeing up the labor yeah. right and I will say uh, at the beginning of this document applicants are instructed to reach out to the planning department and then the planning department would set up the meetings with the applicable department that would need to sign off so I will be tracking and I will know what departments um, and if departments are saying no it will hopefully, I'm encouraging and make, trying to make sure it'll happen through us so that we do have a finger on what's being rejected, if any. 
Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. And not to go too deep into <coughs> the, the process map, if you will, right? But mm. like we've talked a lot about what's going to happen, right? As once so is there going to be some type of reporting available that says, hey, we have you know five projects on our plate and we have they're at these levels and these are the ones that were rejected for like is there going to be something like from like the that? departments from the departments yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of a justification as to why they were like the so so it, like in really big scope bro mm -hmm. like what I'm thinking about is so we we you know get a, a bunch of applications let's let's hope that we do right yeah um, and we're gonna go through a process and say these X out of X are now going to be going through right and they're going to be, be submitted to town meeting for approval for funding mm -hmm. projects now going to be on their merry way mm -hmm. is it the responsibility of the board to say oh what's the status of what rowan's doing and what melanie's doing and what math is like is it are going to is it going to be our responsibility to verify that they're at certain milestones that they've actually committed to here is that part of our responsibility or is that not part of our responsibility and if it is part of our responsibility how do we get that information, right? I would say it's those post applicants or those post. Uh, right. Di what? It I'm not. I'm not sure what that term I don't is, think but you the po I, don't, I think you mean during the application process, not after their. Uh, I'm just saying we've we've had a lot of things that have gone off application process discussions, and I, and it just when you started talking about you're going to get information about mm -hmm. who gets rejected by mm -hmm. various departments, it just triggered in my brain. Are there going to be other things that we need as a as a committee, are there going to be other things that we're going to need to understand of what's going on with our projects? Never mind what's rejected, but what's in progress, what's completed, yeah. what was the finalization? Did it meet what the what the project scope was outlined as? Did it did it deviate? Are we going to get other types of things that we're going to be responsible for validating as part of being part mm -hmm. of the committee? Not application mm -hmm. specific, Jason. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, uh, I, thought meant, uh, I thought you meant the end, but all, it sounds like all all of it. I, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, they had, I think it would have to be a sort of like, as you're saying it, I was thinking, you know, it's like a dashboard of where, where, is, where is this project in the pipeline? Yeah. Um, and there's some really granular pieces to say, okay, if it, the request is an, app, it's an eligibility stage, um, it's already, has it gone to, it's a historical uh, um, category, so has it gone to, H, right. you know, HC or HDC uh, or any of that else that, you know, right. <laughs> you know, has to go through. And have they weighed on that, right? So I, I do see that as like some kind of like charting uh, through that. I think we have to start to work through that process to that granular level to do that. Um, then that's really more an internal document, not public facing document, but mm -hmm. just to say, mm -hmm. well, there's a public facing component of that too, right? I think just at a higher level to say, this is where you're at. You're, you've made it past, you made it eligibility, you've made it to application, yeah. you're scheduled to meet in the December meeting, which is a public hearing. Right, and then you see those big milestones that the public should see. Um, there is uh, another CPC. There's another website, the CPC uh, community, that um, I think has a really good front-facing um, view of this, uh, which I think I would just communicate with Rowan and Bernie on that so about nice. about how to like yeah. a, a good thing that I've seen where people uh, that the community has really put out there to say where is the status of a project. That's more the public-facing side of it. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, but yes, I think we, we do need to have that kind of uh, internal trackers because um, sure. I think there'll be a lot of moving pieces, yep. I hope. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and again, I know that's a separate conversation, but I just, you, you triggered a thought in my head yeah. and I had to get it out. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. No. Okay. Moving on. We don't have too much left. The project, this is the full application. Again, I don't think we have a lot of comments here. Except for this one. Um, just a question, how, how can this really be answered? I think just, again, folks reading this, reviewing this, were putting themselves in the applicant's shoes, and I guess this one, this question was flagged, um, how many people will benefit from this project as a measure of success? Are there any thoughts for or against this question, I guess? I, um, I know Deborah was keen on having that question there. If I remember mm. correctly, um, it's really to get that scope of how what's the population is is it benefiting just a certain neighborhood mm -hmm. is it benefiting all of town? Um, 
Well, yeah, how, does it, how do you see usually in other yeah. planning, you know? I don't have a problem with it. I, th I think some projects may, be, may benefit a smaller group and others larger, but what difference does it make if it's benefiting the public as long as it's fulfilling all the other objectives? Um, I think it'll be clear how many people it, it's uh, affecting just through the, the, the project itself. So it doesn't really, I, if, I'm comfortable with leaving it the way in there but myself. Uh, and, Marcia's and, not. And I, no, 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 <laughs> I, will ar I will argue for that as well. But I think, you know, this is a, this is a common question that's asked. Um, it's a measure of impact. Mm -hmm. And whether your impact is, you know, we're preserving a document that every third grader in Shrewsbury is going to see, or we are adding conservation land that maybe 10% of the Shrewsbury population will be able to access, or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Right. I think it gets, it, it, it helps people think about and be proud of the impact of of their work so uh, small or large small or large and we're not I don't think that we're judging the applications based on the size of the uh, impact. No, I'm not as a as a personal preference I wouldn't it would be the, the scope of the project and it has to benefit a population but it doesn't really necessarily have to be the greater population of Shrewsbury. You know, I think we have to make a distinction here when we're thinking about this between actual benefit and potential benefit. If we put out something like we start a new park and, you know, 100 people a month go there, that's okay, but anybody in town could go there. That's right. And, you know, if they know yeah. it and they have it in the back of their minds, then they'll say, oh, yeah, we'll go next month. Um, that's a, a positive good. And that I think that's a very... Um, you know, beneficial thing that people know that they can do this. They may never do it. I mean, how many? There's a lot of li library books in the in the library, and it, you know, it's a benefit. I'm never going to read every single one, um, but that's the same kind of thing. You have it just in case somebody wants it at some point. Maybe perhaps the second question helps drive the third, like uh, helps drive getting the answer without having to say how many people, because it's really a quantifying question: how many people. You know, how do you measure that? How, how does the applicant no, measure yeah. that? But the who benefits, that's something that subjectively they can answer so that we can infer from that response. If we're preserving a document that sits in, in a vault here, well, no one gets to see the document except for the town clerk. Yeah. Right? But it's a record for our town to have forever, right? So. You say one? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone no, 300 entire, years from now. <laughs> the entire population. When, when is it not the entire population? <laughs> a park is accessible by everybody. A piece of conservation land is accessible by everybody. Right? The answer is always Shrewsbury. Third graders in Shrewsbury can see a particular document. Or, uh, I, uh, I still think that it is good Yes, qualitative impact, qualitative assessment is good, but it's also nice to see numbers. It's nice to see quantitative Im impact. Um, and I think that this question will ask the applicants to really consider the impact. And however they interpret it, that's, that's fine. Um, but this I will we, argue for quantitative. I'm sorry. sorry no, I'm Go sorry. Ahead. You're still talking about them. Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say maybe there's a way to ask just that, right? Rather as opposed to how many, maybe there's a, just a better way to say what you know what is the impact. Like I know it says who benefits, and I know again benefits can be subjective, right? But is there some mechanism or some language that we can say to say just what you said, Martha, to give the applicant pause and say, hey, you know, it's not just for me. It's something that does gonna, it is going to benefit some part of the community. And here's who I think it's going to benefit without having to put a qualitative number around it. Because I think a number is really a number. Like you said, Jason, it's the town of Shrewsbury. That and whether it's a subset of the town, I don't know how you I don't know how you measure that. Like you said, third grade is okay. In twenty twenty two, third grade is could be three hundred, in twenty twenty five it could be three thousand. Like I don't know, you know. Um, Three thousand. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. All, all the teachers in Shrewsbury just had a heart attack. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, but I think your point is valid, though. There has got to be some way we can make the applicant think about what they're proposing, 
as the benefit, and I just don't have that skill in my brain to say what that is, you know. But I just think it's something we can do, it, whether it be a number or whether it be some other language to say just what you said, Martha. Like, how do we show in some measurable way the benefit? So I think that's the intent of the number, right? The intent of the number is to say, here's that measurable quantity of the benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> we can get stuck on one question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, what's the pleasure of the committee? Do you more in favor of ad keeping it in and rewarding it or removing it? I, I would say keep it in and see how, I, I think we have to see what kind of responses we get to these questions will help us next year right. to figure out what changes we need to make. But leave it in and we'll see if, yeah. it's, if it's... If it's a housing project, it directly benefits the 12 people who will be living in that structure. For example, agreed. Yeah. Let's okay. thank you for that. Um, let's leave it in and, and see, see what, what happens. happens. Yeah. 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 And I, sounds okay. good. It's a living so. document. It's not right, exactly. What's to right. lose? Yeah, I think we're going to make it a lot. Of, we're going to be sitting here this time next year making a lot of changes because we would have read some and been like, oh, that we could have. If, if we ask the question this way, we'll get better information next year. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, so just scrolling down, some suggested text. Would you like me to make that any bigger? Um, what is the anticipated maintenance schedule and budget? No, oh, how does anybody know that? If it's going to be, we don't do maintenance, so it has to be some other arrangement. So, sorry, I'm just um, someone I think just joined. Uh, it's me again. Uh, so for some for some reason, my video <laughs> Google Meet got disconnected. Okay, so you're on uh, the phone. Uh, are you able to still still see the screen? Um, not the screen, but I'm just uh, I just joined by phone. Okay. The the document we are looking at is in the Google Drive folder under today's mm -hmm. meeting. If you'd like to follow along yeah. as best you can. Sure. Sure. Thanks. And, and definitely just do, just shout out if you want to interject, okay? Definitely. Okay, thank you. Thanks. And we're on page 15, if that's helpful. <laughs> Correct. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's so, fair to ask the question, what is the anticipated maintenance schedule and, and budget? This, again, is the application, right? This is the full application. Right. By this point, you would have had to have worked with your uh, co-sponsor if it's town. Um, to kind of get an, a guesstimate about this, right? Um, yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. Any opposition to having that question? Nope. Okay. Moving okay. on. Um, this statement. Oops. Um, this is a question. Can you let Rajesh know where we are? Yes. All right. We are on the bottom of page sixteen, under attachments. Um. Staff had a question about the second bullet point, the organizational budget um, for applicants who are not a municipal department. I think a question to the group, particularly working group, was what would this look like? Is this just the budget of an outside group to understand what their financial um, situation is? Yes, uh, that was also a, a Deborah uh, interest. Um, is there a concern with having that question? I don't think it was not a concern. It was just a, I don't think staff knew what that meant. Okay. Or what that would look like. But we're not expecting applications from individuals, correct? We're expecting applications from some, from groups who have some degree of formalized yeah. organization. And if it is an individual, they will work through the co-applicant process, right, in terms of the, if it's town-owned, um, and if it's organizational, if it's, let's say, a nonprofit, let's say it was a Habitat Humanity, right? Um, that's where the organizational budget will come in and saying, is this really an organization that has a financial background to do that? Let's say, you know, it's an entity that mm -hmm. we don't know, right, we haven't never heard of something something LLC, right? 
is this a reorganization? You know, this is, it kind of gives you the background of are, are they in a position to be able to carry this forward? Do we need to get into things like fiscal agents? Can you elaborate more on that? Um, if there is an organization that is n not perhaps an official 501c3 or has some other official status, they can work with a, another organization to actually handle the money. So, for example, if you're partnering <coughs> with the United Way, the United Way can receive the funds and then disperse them to, to you. And because the United Way is a bigger organization and it has um, it files a 590 and, and various other forms mm -hmm. associated with nonprofits. That may be a question for town. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, is that is the question? Is that allowed, or do you? Are there any concerns do we need around? That? Do, we need do we need it? it? Okay. I do know that the coalition training that we all received. I, I think discouraged us from giving to groups that do not have that kind of okay. clear financial background, but I think your, your point you're raising is about the having, well, they found somebody they, else that they right. would, do that, would do that part of it. Mm -hmm. hmm. I feel like also borders the, the coalition question of like, yeah, because you, you found somebody who, who would act on behalf of, right? Like working with a trustee. Oh. Mm. All right. I believe that's it. We have this. Oh, work in progress. Okay. Okay. So, I think I have a question. At least, is are we voting, or is there are there too many retroactive changes? I think that there's I would too many changes to, to to vote okay. tonight on the eligibility. Okay. Form any application. And the application wasn't in any scope for for tonight here, but uh, right. Just I suppose just the application or the yeah. Eligibility. Uh, that is a separate agenda item, I think. But we could always take it out of order if we wanted to. Okay. Yeah, I think um, if we have that August first meeting. <laughs> well, we need to talk release. about that yeah. next because I'm not sure. Yeah, because that that. I think yeah. I think there's too many edits here to to go through. Um. I mean, and just looking at uh, just this is so this starts this is going backwards, right? The co-sponsor consent form that those are just comments that can be deleted at this point. There's uh, yes, there's just the word count question, but it sounds like because we're having additional pages allowed, that question is no longer relevant. I think I think that's the last. I, I think where we landed here with the side counts is to give the flexibility to see. Mm -hmm. you Based on how you're providing, if it's a, you know, if it's a PDF, right. you're you're bound to the right. sizing by the PDF, right. right? But what the attachment gives a carte right. blanche to folks to attach right. additional, right? Okay. I guess my question is, I don't know how many edits are still left in here. I mean, there's a lot of red, but I think we've covered it all. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't, I wasn't accepting as we went. Okay. Just to call that to your attention. Um, I think we're. I really would like Deborah to, to weigh in on this because she's really this is something this is an area where she does this day daytime right her day her day job is this um, I would I would like for her to to feel comfortable with it as well to vote in on it um, and I think just to close out all the reds especially if this the first page the introduction page you had a, a general concern around the gym um, so perhaps maybe we should just focus on can we focus on that page here just so we get the the direction to be able to revise it. Because I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not clear right now what, which way to go on the introduction page. Okay. Right? That was that was an idea of like, oh, get some some comments out there. But Gail, you also bring up some some concern with the first page as well. About we're asking people to do something, right? Yeah. Okay. So if we if we can hash that part out, and then that's enough information to be able to revise it. Let's say with myself, you, maybe Deborah, and then propose that a clean copy for. Mm -hmm. For the next meeting. Okay. So I'm going to stop presenting. We. Well, I think it'd be helpful just to have the first page up so that we can. The first, the introduction page. Okay. Please. Okay. So, Jim and Gail, you both had 
some concern around the general language here. Was there anything further that you want to elaborate? You know, do you basically just if you're like like Jim said, if you're asking somebody to do something, you should provide the method to do it without them having to go, th you know, searching and, and yeah. wondering how do I do this and questioning it. So it was just basically the email address and and contact information. Right. And like so, like again, just looking at that second paragraph, Jason. Right. So. You know, um, those those interested in applying are strongly encouraged to read, blah, right? So rather than just have that be words, have it actually be a link to that, so that when they can click on it and go, yeah. and then they can go. Right. And then the same thing when it comes to, you know, attending an information session or a workshop, right? So if I know we talked about the process for doing that, so again, have it be instead of just words, it would be a link to how to do that. You know what's the process around that so that people that don't have anything or have never interacted with us before brand new first time how do I do what you're asking me to do okay great I can link the email yeah. uh -huh. and yep yeah. um, in the email too for the for the workshop right um, Oh, it's a website because that we'll have to post on there saying workshops coming on yeah. this date. So when we get okay. to that, that item. Okay. All right, was there anything else here? That was, that was really, and, and that that same thing carries through the doc. Like it, it, there's a number of places where yeah. it says the same thing. Go right. here, do this, right? So either we can add those in. I can okay. add those in right. easy. I, I, I think I I think I know what you're mm -hmm. yeah. suggesting, okay. and I can propose where that seems okay. applicable. I do just want to be sensitive. I, I mean, we, we could go as late as ten, but you, we probably want to stop before nine, <laughs> and we have a lot to do. So. Well, the, the reason why I'm, I'm, I want to make sure that input is because we have to do this interest with the community, right? Is to have this done and ready for next meeting, no later than the August meeting, right? Because otherwise, there wouldn't be any time for folks to actually fill this thing out. So. Um, yeah, and I think. If the chair um, is willing, I'd like to present my timelines yes. and the meeting dates because that directly informs when we're meeting next, right? Yes. Okay. Is that is that the right order of the agenda? Mm -hmm. It was to vote on the in the schedule. That's what that's what I'm talking about. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, Jason. Did we are, are we doing anything with this workflow chart? Or is that something we're discussing tonight or? or? I think it's uh, think great. Is that is that part of the packet flow. that goes to the applicant? Uh, that's in internal. Internal. We're going to say how how the because it's it's would go. great. It really clarifies the whole process. At least it did for me. <laughs> so whoever put that together it was very well Rowan. done, Rowan. <laughs> All right. So I. Oh, sorry, sorry. Just to click. Uh, if anybody has a comment about that document, uh, please do send it to to Rowan. Okay. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, good. and read through it. I I think. It was really helpful for me in establishing what my role may be um, with the group, and so there's certainly oh, role that roles that you'll fill as well identified there. So worth just. This is where you ask for a raise. That's <laughs> <laughs> where she gets one. <laughs> yes. All right. I'm pulling up. Um, I'm trying to craft my screen here to make the most sense. So I'm going to pull up the timeline along with two kind of options for meeting dates um, and, and corresponding deadlines, et cetera. All right. And he's back. Yeah. Oh, good. On video. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So I'm going to do, this is going to be a little painful just for a moment, but. So, as I'm presenting, feel free to interrupt me, Jason, or any anyone uh, in the committee. But let's just. First question I have though is: <laughs> Are the dates that you that you have on the right hand side are they the same as the ones that were in the email? So, um, in part, yes. Uh, so. What's prompted this um, change is primarily the coalition's um, 
suggestion that we have our app full applications due in mid-November. So originally, in the timeline that, mm. with the meeting dates that was sent, sent previously, we've had it being due in mid-December. So because of this month forward shift, I've needed to rework um, the meeting dates and kind of the deadlines. Um, I tried to stay consistent in option two to the dates that you've already seen okay. um, with a s kind of a slight, um, slight changes and actually some um, removal of meetings, but we can talk. So I think these kinds of things are always hard to, to do, but um, maybe I'll walk through our timeline first and then how my proposed meeting dates Line, align yeah, with those yeah, are you comfortable with that all right so just to say right on this on the left side um, phase one we have this application first well first we have to approve these documents that we're reviewing and then have this workshop then eligibility will be due we have to review eligibility and decide on whether they are el eligible um, next we have our, fu our, our full application due date as you can see, we changed here to November. And then we're proposing that we have, we'll have applicants present um, at the meeting directly following when applications are due. And that's, those can be as formal or informal as I think the committee wants to advise at, at a later date, but generally just the applicant in front of us speaking to their project. Um, then the following meeting, we, and if this is where it lines up with that workflow um, spreadsheet, but I'd like to ask, you know, representative uh, board members to present or report back to their original committees, get those committees' perspective on it. I would be going back to department heads or, or other staff to get their perspective. Um, we may be meeting with the board of selectmen at some point um, just to provide some a status update, um, and all that would be happening. Um, in between the presentations and then that next meeting and that next meeting would be a report back kind of our findings it would be an additional time to ask questions we can kind of see how else what else will be needed at that time so that's the second that's the second meeting after applications are due that's our um, number five and then the the last meeting we're proposing is in February where you would vote score or vote uh, in some way those applications that's, that's broad, but I guess if I, any questions briefly on that? So in March mm -hmm. is when the board gets together to write, to, to sign the warrant, yes. right? I think there's an opportunity that if we needed to add an early March meeting? No. No? No, so I discussed with town, um, town manager's office and they would like it by March. Uh, because the board needs time to review before they sign the warrant at in the second on the second Tuesday likely so we can talk about that wow. in the meeting schedule as well okay. so um, then and I guess we can just throw in we'd also probably have a um, though that are our regular or required uh, public forum sometime in May as well so that would be kind of our last meeting. Okay. Anything else before we move to meeting? Um, dates? Well, yeah. That, that timeline is just for the for the application process. It doesn't. This is not saying was as you said verbally, but not written here, which is the the public forum. And then June would be like any edits to the process that we want to do when updating the community community preservation plan, where applicable, um, and then cycle again to next July. Okay. Yep. Okay, so um, given, again, just given this November deadline and giving ourselves from mid-November to late February to review the full applications and make decisions is kind of the crux of what's driving my meeting suggestions. Um, and I think it's actually helpful to work backwards. We can see, I guess, what we can do, I guess I'll do option one first. Um, which is a early February vote. And now, Jason, to your point, an early February vote allows us to push out to a late February vote if needed. Um, 
So again, these are, I believe these are all Mondays, although I, I'm sorry if I, I, I didn't put the, the day of the week, which is certainly important. So if someone wanted to have a calendar up, maybe that would be helpful. They are Mondays. Okay, great. Okay, so moving backwards, right? February 6th, we would vote, and I'm just, I'm here, right? So everyone's kind of following. February 6th is Monday, yep. January 9th, the committee reviews the full applications, and then we share the feedback that you would have discussed with your other boards and committees. Early December, we have project presentations, right? So that's when the applicant would come in and, and um, present to us. And that would be because we would have applications due in November, right? So mid, that. November 16th, I think it's a Wednesday or Thursday. Um, and that would provide your, you as committee members to read through the applications ahead of the pre presentations. It would allow me as staff to track down anything that might be missing or incomplete um, and just provide a little bit more time for us um, for that those project presentations, okay? Sorry, uh, yeah. I, mean, I think that uh there probably be the possibility of some presentations spilling into the January. Let's say we had a lot, right? Mm. Spilling into the January time frame, which would then put a pressure to have a second meeting in January or December, mm -hmm. where everything's being squeezed on both ends. Yeah, it, it feels like they're there. We should probably have a unofficial date in our like at least blocked off at least mm. on our own personal calendars to know hey, there's a potential this date may be. Okay. To be call up, but not a not formal sure. proof for, right? Sure. Does that does that make sense? Seeing how things are squishing in here. Mm -hmm. All right. So moving on. Yeah. Um, we so applications just tracking are due November six sixteenth. Applicants would have been uh, alerted of their eligibility in early October, so that would give them a month and a half to complete the application. Um, Again, they've hopefully already been thinking about their project because they've submitted this eligibility. They should be speaking with town departments, coordinating if it is a co-sponsor relationship. Um, and again, we would be deciding October 3rd whether they would be eligible. Um, I've built in two meetings in this scenario. Um, October 3rd would be voting, but September 12th would be reviewing. So that would be we need to talk to the historical commission if, if they are considering this project to be of historical importance um, or any other relevant pieces and that gives us a full month well, a little bit less than a month for that for that um, diligence due diligence um, with the eligibility being due september 2nd okay but i think it's going to be possible that you're not going to have all ducks, all, all check boxes done in that month, right? And it, that maybe some projects will have to be tentatively eligible. Yeah. Uh, and then that, that is in our workflow, uh, well, the left hand side document mm -hmm. that it could be eligible possibly. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, uh, Melanie, you brought up this point before about like to try to get a meeting on somebody else, on somebody else's group, like Conservation Commission, right? Right. You yeah. need a long time time frame, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if we need to go by planning, right? It's not like you just get on the calendar like that, right? But um, they wouldn't be needing to do that, ideally, in the eligibility phase. Maybe that historical commission's a bit of an outlier, but... Well, even if you just wanted to bring it as part of the agenda as a member, right? We would be asking probably for you to bring it to once we have the full application cycle. Is that what you're... What you're and that's, yeah, I mean, just to be on the agenda, right? Yeah. You have enough. There's, there's a little more flexibility, I think, with member concerns and, and issues they can they can come up a little bit after the, the other um, project deadlines are due um, what I'm uh, holding in my head though is the Conservation Commission meets on the third Tuesday of the month and so that is very close to you know if we have project presentations on the 5th of December um, I'm not going to get a chance to talk to the Commission until that you know, December, whatever two weeks is after after that. Um, I think that's okay. Okay. I think I'm. We'd be giving you from, yeah, December fifth, well, to January 9th. So it would have to be during the December yeah, meetings, though. December yeah. Meeting. yeah. Which is a little. I understand if that. That's tricky. 
it can we can also i mean we can also we'll have to see how that what kind of input these boards have as well i mean if it needed if you needed to take both january and february and report back at the meeting that you decide i mean it's probably not the end of the world unless they had some really strong comments either way you know but we won't know that i guess right. so but we will have we will have two full months before we have to vote mm -hmm. so even if it doesn't make it to one it could make it to the, the next month i would suppose right if it doesn't make it to a commission you know and you'd be able to get feedback from the commission to say hey this yeah. thing was brought to and i'd be getting feedback from staff that run the those boards which isn't the same but right they would have a, a similar perspective potentially well hmm. you know I know, right? You, it's hard to know. We'll, we'll, see, what hap we'll see what happens. You could also attend the meeting before the project presentation, just using the application. Like if it really, if it fell like that, something. And hopefully, with, you know, with open space issues, it's going to be a big enough thing that it will, that people will have come and, and spoken with the, mm -hmm. the conservation agent or the or the commission ahead of time, so it will be on the radar. Sure. Okay. Only, the only concern with the first Mondays of months is just that mm -hmm. there's a ton of holidays. You know, there's like Labor Day and there's, there's this. And did this. I successfully avoid those here, though? Or did you did. You did. That's because that's, that was my intention. Yeah. So I did push. You'll see it's not always the first, but I think in most cases it is. But I want to finish this. Um, just want to finish up because I think the important part and why I worked backwards is because August 1st, you see as application kickoff, which means we're, a, we're approving it. And we're holding the workshop. Yeah, that's a lot. So mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that uh, that's an option one, right? It's it's we have everything lined up, and it, and we've been working behind the scenes, and so it's just a vote. We, there's hardly any deliberation, mm -hmm. um, if that can be possible. <laughs> and then it's more of a kickoff, right? It's a all right, here it is. We're this is our introduction to it, and we invite interested parties and and we host it more as a um, you know an opening of the application and the the workshop is more of an introduction to it okay how do you envision that meeting being held would it be in a room like this would it be this room yeah okay yeah I don't think it has to be too special and in fact if it's if we are having it August 1st that's not a lot of time to prepare no. so it would have to be pretty <laughs> informal <laughs> it, it would be a it would be a, maybe what we did today, a little bit flashier, just a walkthrough of the application. Okay. That's how I envision it, at least, but I don't want to step on. Then would we need a pre-meeting to that meeting, then? Well, that's... Or do we... Do, so is there... Can you do that voting or, or application review via electronic? Yes. You see here... Oh, yeah, I did include it. We could also do a remote meeting at the end of July where everyone just logs on and hopefully it's still a quick conversation but the vote just occurs then mm -hmm. so maybe and maybe that's a little bit more comfortable I it's I guess I also wanted to see where we were with the application at the end of this meeting so well, option two, we have the we approve it on the first. Why can why are we waiting till the twenty second to yes. do the workshop? Couldn't we just do it the following Monday? Of August? Yeah. And then it wouldn't change the other timeline. It would give us just meet two weeks in a row. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this we could totally do it this way. This way, option two um, actually cuts out like eligibility review a little bit it shortens it and it pairs it down and so I guess I was shaping it around how we wanted to phrase phrase the the timeline but we could totally do a little hybrid um, option two again you just see is eligibility is is due September 15th and then we're reviewing individually and then just deciding in two weeks basically that's just a tighter turnaround well, in option one, there's an eligibility review date, and then there's an eligibility decision date, two separate meetings. Yeah. In option two, 
there is no yeah I know and I hope I'm not confusing you with all this I I just wanted to show you a couple different ways mm -hmm. we could do it um, who does right. the eligibility review it would probably realistically be me talking to the coalition um, it would be y you all needing to devote some time on your own to review and send me questions and it would just probably be more of a heavy lift for me around coordinating it but I think it's reasonable um, so we could do it that way as well but then we wouldn't really be able to m we wouldn't have as much time to make sure everything's lined up for the applications it might be more that our eligibility is a shorter briefer glance at everything and then we move into the application with maybe less information I like Kathy's idea um, personally right going with option one and having that second meeting um, in August mm -hmm. um, and also in particular because you have the opportunity to have that later February meeting if we need if we need to it's not posted there but just adding mm -hmm. an additional meeting um, and so I would say option two is I think the dates that I sent to you all so I okay. tried to make I think option two also maintains the schedule that you've all seen but uh, Monday's gym I thought you have a uh, conflicts on Mondays right some Somebody's second second Mondays are usually my conflict did I was trying for third I know I know, I know, I know. is that I mean don't, don't try to work around me like I can well no I, I was trying to work around you I was trying for third yeah, yeah. but I don't know if that I one didn't hit it <laughs> that's okay. And I'm, that's not a that's not a criticism. I don't even think uh, that way. Um, my apologies. Then. No, 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 it's a, that's but. totally totally fine. Um, so option one, if we went so with option one, are you are you in the clear? If we went with option like t my preferred, and again this is yeah. a gym thing, not a, like my preferred is to do option one without the late July, mm -hmm. but do. Uh, August 1st and then on August 7th or whatever. Like oh, we could do the 15th if you have a conflict on the 2nd. Yeah, like, like to me, like, I'd rather have two Just in Just have a bunch in August. Yeah, and get it, get the workshop done, you know, the net the following week. Just push the workshop one extra week. Have the August 1st meeting be the, the remote meeting or have it even be an in-person meeting to review the, doc the documents mm -hmm. and then the next following week have it be the workshop. That would be my preferred. You mean the, uh, the, the third week, the 15th? I would make adjustments to other calendars okay. that I need to, to get it done the second week. I'd be worried though here with the September 2nd deadline for eligibility if we had the workshop on the 15th. Right, so right? I, would, I would adjust to meet that second Monday. That's why I was thinking application at, on the first, or sorry, workshop on the first to give a f full month. Okay. okay. Six one half done on the other. Um, and, and true, we, have, we do have three weeks before August, right? It, it, it's kind of like just honing in on just the application just to make sure it's good. Anybody have any concern with having a focused meeting just on the application process and just seeing seeing the last revision of it and it's really the whole the whole thing it's eligibility on the application and the introduction page um, uh, along with the timeline what well, timeline we're doing now Never mind. Is um, it in July or August July. 1st I can't do the last week of July But I'm a um, person, so. Uh, could you so. review yeah, and then see. documents? Can you forward? If the edits are done, let's say turn yeah. around within a few days, right? Yes. It's in your mailbox to review the comments. You have an opportunity to write back. I'm good yes. with these edits. Right. Yes. I just couldn't meet 7 to 9 on Monday, whatever that Monday is. The 20th. I can't either, actually. I, I have a ZBA, my other my other board <laughs> <laughs> on that night. Uh, I mean, it, so it we could look at what, day, what date time is about, is good for everybody common just for this specific thing, right, to review the application. For, for a, let's say, remote. Okay. I, think, yeah. I think remote is easier mm -hmm. if people are comfortable with technology. Does, does it have to, uh, so I'll ask the question, does it have to be a meeting or can it just be a, I oh. approve of, a mean, an email vote? No, it has to be in the meeting. I will okay. say, okay. I should, we'll have to, Post B, B, I'll keep you updated on whether it can be remote based on some mm -hmm. state, um, I don't know, state permissions that we're waiting on. But either way, we could schedule one right now if that's 
in the board of the board's interest. We could, presumably, if you had feedback that says, I'm good with this, <laughs> then we know how you feel about the application. Yeah, I can't. Right. I can't meet any evening that week. I'm on vacation, and I have house guests. Of course, and no, no, no. I'm just saying that. Um, but I could. Sure I could do the work, the pre-work for sure, and just not participate in the meeting. It it, it really is just an approval meeting. Yep. I'm hoping, unless there's like, well, no, we got to. I didn't realize it was this said this, and we need to make an edit right here on the on the, on the fly. Um, that was the 25th, right? For the, that week. It's the week of the 25th. Yeah. Is the, is the week of the 18th too quick a turnaround time? If to, to, to help, like, we, uh, are we arbitrarily way? pickling the 25th or is the 18th not an option? I could do the 18th. I think, what do, what do we need to get done? We need to, I'll just clean up the red lines, make any additional comments. I guess if Stuart gets back from vacation, our, our representative from, or our, liaison at the yep. coalition I think he's gone for the next two weeks so we right is was it two weeks? I didn't see how long it was you gonna say, be out, yeah I can't remember but let's say if we approve it then we won't get his review but we did get chases we need a chase yes yeah. yeah, represented from the coalition so okay if some of us are on vacation as long as there is the adequate quorum, quorum then it's okay right mm -hmm. right yeah and that's okay. yeah that's uh so we're looking at here. So let's see, calendar-wise. Okay, let's take a look at the next week, 18th. Okay. Uh, I, I won't be available, but I think, I think so. Okay. Uh, okay, July I don't think 18th. it'll take very long. Uh, uh, and is there a time, a date that is good for you? Like, if we don't do the 18th, is the 19th good for you? Is 20th? Like, are, you, are you asking me? I'm open or to everybody, open. anybody. <laughs> and this is, this is uh, re remote, right? 18th. This is remote. Uh, okay. This, I don't want to say that for sure. It's not promised. It's, it's not promised, although I anticipate it should be, but I think we'll, I mean, I'm looking at the available room space okay. at the moment right now. So it looks like Wednesday and Thursday are available. For, so the 20th and the 21st here. I am up. Yeah. You're, you're away the whole week? I'm away Thursday to Thursday, so, <laughs> yeah. but, but, but again, as long as there's a quorum, I think you should, I mean, yeah, it, it won't work for everybody, yeah. so we should go ahead and uh, schedule a date, you know, so. Okay. Either works for me, Wednesday or Thursday works for me. Or Monday, right? Monday's Monday. still in the mix? My preference would be Monday. Monday, I, I wouldn't want to schedule it because this room is not available. Mm -hmm. uh, Monday the 18th? Uh, do we have? I don't think that. Uh, does it have to be televised? Cause that that opens up the option like the small room on the side. Yeah, I'm like I'm not available on the 18th. But if it is board meeting, don't we have to kind of uh, send it to? Yeah. Kind of publish it and then. Let's see how many we need. You're, you're testing my open meeting law. Um, I think you need just two days to post the agenda. So, I mean, we're not advertising anything. Um, yeah, so the 18th, if we meet in conference room A. We'd have two people missing on the 18th. Yeah. Though, so, yeah, yeah we got to do 20th. Then. Well, okay. Right. Two people would be, I'm assuming if everyone else can make it, though, that would be a quorum. Mm -hmm. You'd have but you seven. But you could 20th. I can I can I can make the twentieth work. I think this is going to be a very quick meeting. Yeah. All right, you promise? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a very good track record. record. <laughs> I'm sitting here at ten o'clock on the on it's the twentieth. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, I've, I've got out of town company that week too. On the twentieth? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, that's twentieth okay, is okay, but <clears throat> if it's quick, they're coming in on the twenty first. So <laughs> it's like. <laughs> As long as I get the beds changed and yeah. the bathrooms cleaned, I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, how about anybody have a conflict with the twentieth? I know. Yeah, I won't be. I won't be here. But okay. uh, go ahead. Go ahead and schedule. Okay. I think you're good. I'm good. Yeah. Good. You're good. 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 Okay. Good. Okay. At seven. Seven p.m. Okay, I'm gonna invite you all to this, as you can see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the only the only agenda item will be approving this. 
Well, we we'll also need to approve the meeting dates, unless we're doing that right now. Let's do it now. Okay. I think we're... Because that's what we're getting to. We can just do option one. <coughs> option two. Yep. I will do this later. Yeah, option. I, I really want to make sure they are, you're yep. present for... The, for <laughs> Workshop. Almost all of them. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, maybe we have to make some adjustments. My my guess is that you're you're probably gonna be the one to get a lot of requests. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Parks. Yep. All right. So in the open space will be like you and you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. If you'd like to so we, okay, so we are good for Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday, the uh, twentieth, seven p.m. Uh, the agenda there is at least the is the uh, application process and uh, the two forms to go along with that. Well, three forms, right? Because that's also the uh, co-sponsor. Yep. Um, we'll have to you and I have to to meet on that. We need, we need Deborah's feedback on that mm -hmm. or email. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Cool. So if I read off the dates. It's also all on your Google Drives um, for this option. I can get rid of. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh. Sorry, sorry. Rajesh. Uh, works fine, 20th. It's a quick one yet. Yeah. 20th. OK, good. Thank you. <laughs> Being able to spoke yeah. it was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So make sure that we, did, that we still on the line. Yeah. <laughs> OK. So. I'm just editing based on what we've just discussed. Sure. And um, remote possible, in person, not. Yeah. I'm going to clean this up and I'll send it back out to you. Okay. In our, I'll yep. put it in our regular format. Um, but for now, this should do the trick. OK. So at this point, we have July 20th. These are all 7 PM meetings on, apart from the 20th on Mondays, right? August 1st, September 12th. October 3rd, December 5th, January 9th, and February 6th. So those are our proposed meeting dates. And they're following a same first, mostly the first Monday. Yeah, apart from yeah. Labor Day. Yes, and so it's and we two that are, that are not. In January. And we've been doing first Mondays. And we've first, been doing? We've been doing first Mondays. Uh, I'm just trying to think of, uh, of Deborah, who's not here to advocate. Yes. States. Okay. Uh, I think we're good to, I feel like we're good to approve the dates. Um, if there is a conflict that comes up later on and is identified that we can always change, we can always vote to change those dates. Right. But the key thing here is for the public to know right. what these dates are for the eligibility and the application process in the workshop. And is D December or September 2nd, let me just pull that up, make sure. I was moving pretty quickly today, so I want to make sure. It's a Friday. That's a Friday. Friday. Yep. Um, at it's that point, day. summer Friday. Let's do, let's do, well, per, I'll propose first because, yeah, we're only here for a half day on Fridays at that point still. And that is the Friday before weekend. Labor Day. Yeah, yeah. And it's a long, long weekend. weekend. Mm -hmm. So, is the first more appropriate? Yes. Okay. Yep. And that's a bit of a more round number. I want to make so sure that's. It's more intuitive. Not somebody yeah, running in the door as you're running yeah. out the door. You're right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. And then November 16th. Let's see. That is a Wednesday. A Wednesday. Yeah. Which, week before Thanksgiving, but. It should be okay. Yeah. Is there a reason that a Wednesday was chosen, or is it just that that's the middle no. of the month? Mm, I think just the middle of the month. We could stay consistent and do it the 17th for Thursdays, or we could keep it. I think Wednesday or Thursday are good deadlines, so people have the first few days of the week to wrap up anything, right? Be consistent. Keep Be it on consistent. Thursday. Sure. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. 
it was over, um, I think, 4 p.m. This bra. You want to say that? Yep. And 4 p.m. is because? Town hall closes. That's what it is? 4.30, okay. right? It's 4.30. Um, yeah. But they our other need day. to be stamped right at yes. the clerk's office. Well. Or do they? Good question. <laughs> yes, they probably should be so that yeah. we have that record of being received. Okay. Then I would actually propose noon. I was going to say the same thing. It That's when that tight. I, I don't know if the planning board deadlines are at noon, but I, I mean you maybe don't, don't know as an app uh, on the board. CBAs are noon, um, but yeah. it makes people vulnerable if they get in late. Are they did they not make the deadline if they do same day? But should it be what day are you open late, and will that do you anticipate that continuing? We don't. We're, we're, we haven't been told whether it'll continue. It's called summer hours, so I'm anticipating it'll stop once the summer ends. Mm -hmm. um, but it's Tuesday, is when we work late. But that might not be relevant here. So, so if we say that it's due at a certain date, does it have to be stamped by that date, or could it be stamped the next day? So, because I think four o'clock would be too tight if the clerk has to do the stamping or whatever. And you say four o'clock, somebody could be walking in the door at four o'clock, and the expectation is that it's stamped by four thirty. That's a tight window. So my question would be if they say if we say it's due by the seventeenth, could it be stamped by the eighteenth at you know, end of business? That's not how we would have we would do other applications. Okay. That's that's what I was but that is I think it should be consistent with how everything else I was there's some yeah. Yeah, yeah. we shouldn't be special. The deadline is you the time and date given is the date that and time that has to be reflected in the time in, stamp. In, in the, the time, time stamp. stamp. So it has to be before, so say, the 4, 4 p.m. I, I just think the 4 p.m. would be too tight. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, if the two other uh, boards or commissions you mentioned have 12 noon, I think we can go with 12 noon. That gives uh, ample time between mm -hmm. 12 and 4 p.m. for yes. it to be right. stamped, you know, just in case. Which will also be reflected back into the application process at the top. Yes, <laughs> totally. Yes, correct. So we're not <laughs> no, good point. Very good point. <laughs> it's enough. It's enough to check this, check that. Okay, are you going to send us this list or? Yeah. I'll clean it up, put it in the format that was in Thank the you. other one. Um, I will so not crossed have out on my page here. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to add our purpose for the meetings. But. All right. So we have to okay. entertain a motion um, if you're ready. Well, one second, uh, please. Uh, mm -hmm. Application workshop. Mm -hmm. So advertising that. Um, don't believe that's a, I mean, that's not, that's our own construct. That's not that we have to do any formal public forum. You know, this is not yeah. a public, public no. sizing and but it's perhaps for a social applicants. media thing. Yeah, it is for applicants. So um, I'd have to be doing that. Social media piece, yeah. um, all the usual communication. So do you need a lead? Is that too soon for, for you? I would ask, I think it would be most successful if members also advertised um, through the channels that maybe you did during the public forum. And I'd like to use the rollout document, that the planning document that I've used in the past. It, it identifies what, I've, what I'm doing, but then it also has a spot for you to add in what you done, have done or could do in terms of spreading uh, the word um, because I think the other thing that's going to be a little tricky, and I don't want to start a whole conversation, but are we going to be, um, we'll be inviting those that attended the forum. Um, I would be likely inviting anyone who's reached out to me with questions about um, the CPC, if, if you're all comfortable with that. Like, I, I would in, um, do my best to capture everyone, but we, I may be sending out is the, committee, is the committee comfortable with me sending out individual invitations to those that have reached out to me about CPC? Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And at, at my discretion, yep. as far as our, yes. my correspondence? Yes. Um, I think it works. I, I feel like um, uh, this, sorry to add to that meeting, <laughs> the 20th meeting, mm -hmm. um, but to at least checkpoint there on the workshop about what is 
Yeah, I think. I'd like to have a, a yeah. what I'd like to, okay, so I'm just gonna verbalize what I'm thinking of doing a workshop. Um, probably a few limited slides. It's basically just cherry picking from the, from the uh, public forum we had in April. Um, just to kind of reiterate like, hey, this is, this is what CPA is about. Um, and then, then really it's about walking through the actual application process, the eligibility application process so they could see that. And then it's really about their time to, to, to say, you know, maybe we have one person in the room, maybe we have 20 people in the room, right? Um, but, you know, and then, you know, we'll probably have a sign-in sheet, right, so we can take an order about people, probably, you know, depending on the number of people, we'll probably talk about <coughs> five minutes, 10 minutes, 20, you know, whatever it is, you know, but then, then capping that. So I think that that might be a long time, that, that workshop, if there's a lot of people in the room. Yeah. You know, but well, I was dividing their time based on the number of people who are there. So, um, yeah, I think that would be agenda for the 20th, is to walk through. I think um, that's a nice checkpoint yep. as well, actually. I think that works out well. Yeah. But I think I would drive that with you, Rowan and, and Deborah, um, about that, uh, what to, what to, what to yeah. have in the workshop. Sounds good. OK. Cool. OK. Uh, any other last thoughts on the timeline shown on screen, which was option one. Now it's the, the option. You're good with dates? Yep. Great. Kale? No conflicts. You're good. Okay. All right. Just want to check in with the four <laughs> categories, right? <laughs> um, okay. All right. Um, then we'll take a motion to uh, approve these dates if there's an interest in doing <coughs> it. A motion I'm, to approve I these move, dates? I move that we pr approve the dates as discussed. And they're on screen here. They go up until February 6th. We're not going to go yeah. at that point. Let's we'll just step to that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. All those in favor of approving these dates as shown on screen, we'll say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nobody. Approved. Okay. These are our dates. Great. Yay. Yay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm so glad to have it. <laughs> yeah. A lot of work. Jason. I don't, I'm, I'm not tracking on the agenda, but perhaps we move the CPC vote to the 20th as well. If yeah. that'd be a long meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I know we're, we're at 9 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, I don't so know if we should go too much. Yeah, for, so we, cut, we, we went through 1 through 5 uh, in our agenda. Uh, the 6 was the uh, timeline, which actually, it was really one and the same. Mm -hmm. We've used, mm -hmm. we've used yeah. the timeline as it relates to the application process via our, uh, our meeting schedule. So that also covers um, that, that <coughs> item. Um, what we have left here was the approving the eligibility form. Clearly, we reviewed it, but we, we can't approve it tonight because that's going to be due on the 20th. That was number seven. Um, number eight is the review and approve C the community preservation plan changes. Um, I think at this point, it would be best to just email it out um, for member feedback. Um, I would say I've reviewed those comments that uh, Stewart and Chase have provided. Uh, nothing that they've called out to me looks like I want to oppose. I think that they're in the best position to say, you know, what they've seen out of the 187 communities that approved yeah. uh, CPA mm -hmm. um, and leverage their expertise on that. Uh, but certainly, if you have feedback on that, I think I think that would be one of the yeah. email points that you would say, yeah. Rowan, to say. If you have any comments, please make sure you bring it back in time for the July 20th meeting. And it should be as simple as uh, we approve those those changes. There is a change to the, the CP plan anywhere from the, on the timeline page, because um, that's just a, a shortened summary of the timeline. Mm -hmm. Right, instead of the December approval, we're saying November. Right, yeah. so I think it's a very minor change there anyway because of it. Um, and um, yeah, so discussing next steps and correspondence. Are there any correspondence come in? Uh, yeah, well, I did have one inquiry about the meeting tonight um, from a representative from Habitat for Humanity. He was oh. curious about um, our application process and wanted to, to view um, kind of the discussion we were having here tonight. Um, he couldn't make it, but I'll send him the link to this meeting once it's up because he, he did ask for it. So. Okay. Awesome. Well, we, we look forward to all applicants yeah. <laughs> at, the, at this stage uh, and probably coming to the workshop. You know, that's something that that's an opportunity to, to, to have that, that public time to talk. Okay. Um, I do have something very quickly about uh, discussing next steps. 
they want to ask. Um, I mentioned this uh, a couple months back, but uh, I just wanted to reiterate because I actually was coming in today to get sworn in in time for this meeting, and I talked ah. to uh, uh, town clerk. And uh, I expressed previously that I wanted to meet with her to, to get an understanding about the community preservation needs uh, through her office about you know the historic documents that are in, in the vault here or any other historic, historic significant documents. Um, it was just something that we, we couldn't meet in the timing because obviously our timing was around the election, I'm sorry, town meeting. Um, and then certainly if we wait too long now, it's gonna be you know the uh, preliminary uh, uh, election and then the election in November, right? So um, I'd, I'd like to have um, Gail I love uh, attend with me to a meeting with, with Sharon at, at her availability um, sure. to just talk through some opportunities. To really, the idea is to get the needs right. of the committee. She also expressed to me that um, you know, she's not the owner, the town clerk is not the owner of all archival, archive documents in there. So this may expand, but I'd, I'd rather just leave right now at this time to, to um, the town clerk and then uh, explore through Rowan about uh, meeting with other um, departments as needed, just for closing that gap on the needs assessment. Does anybody have any objection to That's wonderful. moving forward with that? Okay, so you and Gail and the town clerk would get together to discuss historic documents and their accessibility. Is that what you're saying? Or? Right. It's really to fill the gap of the community preservation needs from okay. the, from the uh, ar archival perspective in our town. Okay. And that's really from a from a perspective of historical mm -hmm. historical need. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. So I'll keep moving with that. Okay. Cool. Um, any other business that we need to cover tonight? Awesome. Well, great. <laughs> uh, Rajesh, are you are you good with uh, with tonight's meeting? Any questions, comments? Yes, perfect. You good? No, okay. I'll sit. All right, then we'll take a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting if we are. So moved. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Second. <laughs> All those favors of uh, adjourning. Say aye. 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 All those opposed. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you, guys.